Hi, Toy Tractor Times fans. I am at the 2021 National Farm Toy Show in Dyersville, Iowa. I'm here with Jim Gorman from Hillsboro, Ohio, who took third place in the Toy Farmer Contest. Congratulations, you got a great uh, 1 16th scale display here. Thank you. And uh, do you mind giving us a tour of what's out here? Okay, we'll look around, see what you want to say. All right, uh, our first is a Ford. Uh, what model tractor is this with the corn picker? 600 Ford with a 601 uh, one-row mounted corn picker. And now you hand-built um, the picker? And the picker's all that scratch built on the brass. We can see the chains here and the um, augers and then the, the auger fighting here on the picker head. It's a very nice piece. And then a, a classic corn harvesting setup is this uh, uni tractor from Minneapolis Marine, which became the new idea, uni system. Uh, so we've got the picker here that, that you built. And the, um, the concept, of course, is that it's a multifunctional unit that would have had a corn picker or a small grain combine or a baler or many other items. Oh, yeah, it all mounts on the on the mule. Uh, oh, you don't. It goes over here and uh, sets on there. And you're ready to go pick corn. And then you got your little cart to haul it around. And then you're uh, hoist when you go to change over from one unit to the other. So you can pull this off, put the combine on it whichever way you want to go, but they had about five or six different attachments for the Minneapolis Moline Mule. So I guess that each one of these had a different cart to set it on too. But if the uh, farmer, that's what mm -hmm. you would have to have, you know, to switch around, to keep it moved around. Well, that's a really nice uh, picker. Look at all the detail of the sprockets and the chains and the conveyors. It's got quite a few pieces of it. It's, and then the, the cylinder is spring loaded so that it raises, carries itself. And then we've got the W4 Uni Combine down here, which you've got the unloading auger and even the end piece. And yeah, it all folds back like it's supposed to, and then your cylinder inside all turns. The auger turns, the reel turns, and raises and lowers. All the functions I can put in a piece to detail the main, main goal for me. It's very nice. You can see the auger fighting in the bin. So we've got another Ford corn picker, a two row here. That's a 602 mounted on Ford. Uh, that was Part of it is a pre scale picker, but the Ford snouts and everything all added to it. But the Ford has a very aggressive look with the points yeah. up here to push through the corn. Yes, but the shucking bed is all Ford uh, shucking bed has been mounted on there. The ele elevator is all. And then if you look to the rear, the clock. Even the warning labels. It's got to have them. That. That's right. They're Put dangerous. Your in. So we've got a case. Uh, is that a VAC? VAC. Yeah. And what type of uh, auger is on the back here? It, it's just a post old digger a case head mounted on there. It's mounted on the eagle hit, three point hit to head. Uh, the universal so that it swivels uh, like it's supposed to uh, to drive it. Uh, it's made, all made out of brass. So the lift arms on the case same way they're made out of brass on the case. Lift arms to make the eagle hitch. And then we've got a 
corn picker over here is at a Dearborn Wood Brothers. Yeah. This is what became the Ford corn pickers. Yeah. And uh, that's the one of the first ones was a gray. It had a different shucking bed than your later ones where it went to the red. Uh, a different shucking bed on it. Which it's a little bit more aggressive than the other ones. So sure. Get the shield on there probably to keep the corn down. And this one's open. Yeah. Flip it out. Uh, but the Wood Brothers didn't handle big ears of corn. It was more for the smaller the ears, the little narrow elevators. They would get clogged up and bust up. They didn't handle really the puppies in this one. Corn, like, the puppies in the shop. Well, we got the New Holland self-propelled baler here. Yes, yeah, the uh, one. There's the original sales literature for it. 178 with the uh, twine, the extra twine boxes here for your twine. Then you, in the front, you kept your extra twine when it was out in the field. The opening there for your down in your plunger if you had trouble in your plunger. And there's your feed where it takes the cross over to your plunger. And then your uh, the chain carried hay on the cross. Then you find the right place. A lever raises the head up and down to lower. And it was run by a V4 Wisconsin motor. These are a really unique piece of equipment. They were built up into the 1980s. It's uh, great to see one that you built. Yeah. So here we see an earlier New Holland baler with the engine on it. New Four. Holland 77. It's got the big plunger on it. Climb uh, tie with the Wisconsin V4 motor. And it has the nodders on the side and everything. The toolbox, the climb box. Everything is much as functional as I can. Pickup raises and lowers. The plunger works. And this is all built out of brass? This is all brass. Everything I've built is totally brass. The New Holland 166 self propelled one of the first ones that I built out of brass uh, is I like the plunger there. It's got the nodders and everything on the back. Just like the real ones. The only thing with the 166, they use two run cylinder Wisconsin motors to operate it. One to drive the baler and one to run the unit or self propellant across the field. And I see from this one to this one that they moved the seat off like where the plunger is and to the back. So it must, this one must have been a little rougher of a ride. It was a little rougher of a ride, a little bit uh, dustier up to be out there mm -hmm. sitting there running it. And, uh, you know, it uh, from the motor to drive, come up here to drive the, mm -hmm. everything to run the plunger and all, you're going to be a lot of dust. But the old farmer's back in, it didn't matter. You, you got the job done. And you didn't have to have a tr uh, tractor on self propellant. You could uh, use the, the baler to run around, uh, went right along, and you could pull a wagon behind you and load, you know, right straight behind it. We've got the New Holland hay rake. 56, five bar, 18 teeth on each bar that uh, I built. It raises and lowers with your adjustable cranks. Uh, get it all done. Like I used to bring hay with when I was a kid, so that's what I used all the time in the neighborhood. So. so then we've got a Oliver Crawler OC3 with a cultivator on it. Eight nine, uh, a QD 895 uh, front cultivator on it. The neighbors had that's the Basically, the best thing for plowing the back and, and corn, you could zigzag in and out the roads real easy to just about pick every weed out. 
We got the uh, scratchers on the back here to knock down the tracks. Yeah, and yeah the track, track scratchers. It was a challenge getting it to build, but uh, we got it built. Very nice. It's, and it's all out of brass, so little crazy wheels on the front to carry it. Then we've got another case over here, the AC, with a setter on it. Yes, it's been customized with a wide front end and everything. It's got the Eagle Hitch mount on it, but it's got the Holland transplanter on it that we used to set the back with. Then I've got the wheel weights on it. It's, it's been customized, the tractor. Then the tobacco setter is all brass, so. So it's a one row, you'd have two people yeah. sitting there taking plants off the boxes and dropping them into the, the row here. Yes, and one person would uh, play, take uh, like the red color, and the other would do the yellow color. That way you could just switch back and forth, uh, set in the back. Now what is this uh, push mower here? Well, that's what I, I had from this kid. I used to mow the church uh, yard. I got two dollars a trip for going over there, walking a mile through the lawnmower to, to mow the churchyard, which was about a half acre. But that was big money, I think. So, <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. What brand of mower is it? It was just one of those old Murray. Okay. Cheap for the cut and mow. So we've got uh, the Gorman's classic tractor service sign up front here. Now that was always a dream I was going to do. Got in the way, and got the sand me, and getting married and everything. It didn't all happen. Now you can live it out in one sixteen scale. <laughs> yeah, now I'm just doing it in the smaller scale. Everything, because right. uh, I uh, rebuilt farm machinery and stuff when I was still in school for the neighbors and everything, overhaul motors, tractors. But so now I'm just doing everything on a small scale and one sixteenth now after. Uh, retired and working 32 years carrying mail, 13 in the factory and farming, so I'm just playing now. And That's just, a good thing to do. <laughs> we can look in here in the shop and <laughs> looks like a 48 in is in there. Yeah, it needs some work done on it. The old guy sitting there, he's overhauling it, you know, working on it. We got the hood off and we'll repaint it. And then we got some parts over there we're working on. But we got a Wisconsin motor up there on the shelf that we're in in the process of working over, but that's one of the motors that's going to be on one of my next projects when I get it on is a Wisconsin motor, but then there's a universal joint drive shafts and stuff for different things that I've built. i got to have PTO units, shafts for it, just like you see basically in a farm shop. It's my shop, got John Deere. 520 and the John Deere lawnmower from the early 90s. Just uh, something that we guys be working on in the shop, sure. you know. Uh, so we've got another case here. Which uh, model case is this? It's another VAC. Okay. And a uh, case plow. It's got the new bottom uh, mallet plow on this. It's what they call the stump and rock plow. It had the uh, breakaway, which is not plow. It would hit a swap that would fly up and the plow would be left in a hurry and you wouldn't uh, ruin your plow points. So it was just that way you could use that. At the same time, if you're out plowing, you needed to go to the house for dinner or something. You could leave the plow in the field and go right on the house. Too. Sure. Neat, very neat concept. But I've only got four of the real VAC cases, so I can relate to that. Good track here. Yeah. Well, Jim, thank you for the tour and uh, all the great work that you share with us. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you for watching this video. And if you would like to see more videos like this one, check out Toy Tractor Times YouTube with over hundreds of videos on farm toy displays like this one. And if you would like to attend the National Farm Toy Show, it's held in Dyersville, Iowa, on the first full weekend of November each year. As always, thank you for watching.